Okay, this video is going to be on how to do a recrystallization. For the demo, I'm going to recrystallize some impure benzoic acid. And so I'm going to weigh out the benzoic acid first using some whey paper. I'm going to place that on there and I'm going to tear the scale so that I don't have the mass of the whey paper in with the mass of the, crisp of the solid. Right, so I'm going to get about a gram and carefully add some impure benzoic acid. So that's about 0.3. Gives me an idea of how much to do. I want to get a little bit smaller so I don't try not to overshoot it. If I do overshoot it, I'm not going to put the solid back into this flask. It's considered waste at that point and we'll throw it in the waste hood, in the appropriate container. Okay. I'm not going to try to be perfect either. If I get about a gram, that'll be good. Okay, that's fine. So I would just want to make a note in my notebook that I'm using 1.025 grams. Add the solid that I just weighed out into an Erlenmeyer flask. Just carefully pour it. Give it a little shake, and <clears throat> now I've got this, right? And I'm going to be adding the solvent to the crystals, right, to the solid until all of the solid is dissolved, right? So I have some boiling water on a hot plate that I'm going to be using to add to this. And the point is that we want to add the minimum amount of hot boiling solvent, right, to the solid so that it all dissolves. We don't want to add too much, right? Because then during the cooling process, it may not reach super saturation and you may not actually get any crystallization to occur. Then you're gonna to have to heat off some of the solvent and it's gonna be a much longer process if you end up adding too much from the beginning. Um, I don't wanna put this on the hot plate right now because the hot plate is hot and it may melt the solid. Right? You can put it on the hot plate once you have water in there or your solvent in there, but not before then. Okay, so I'm just going to take this, right, I can kind of touch it and see do I feel comfortable with that temperature in terms of the heat. If I didn't, I might want to use a hot mitt, right, and, um, but I'm going to be careful and just touch the top. And, well, actually it's a little too hot, so I've decided to change my mind and use this hot mitt. Just to be safe. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and add some, just a little bit at a time, right? Mix it around, and you can see that all of the solid has not dissolved yet. I started with about 75 milliliters of solvent, and I can figure out how much I added based on the difference. It's always a good idea to have some idea estimate the amount of solvent that you use in case you need to repeat this later. So add a little more. Okay. And at this point, if you want to, you can go ahead and set this on the hot plate to make sure that the water stays at a boiling temperature. Because okay. we want to add the minimum amount of boiling solvent, again, that it takes to dissolve all of the solid. Okay. It's definitely not dissolved. So I'm going to keep going just a little bit at a time. Swirl it around. See how we're doing. Make sure to keep that water hot. So as this gets back up to boiling temperature, some of the water will leave. So of course, the amount of water that we added is not going to be the exact amount necessary to dissolve it because there's some evaporation going on. So once I see that this is actually boiling and I still have solid in there, I can keep adding more water. It's a little hard to see because it's clogging up in there because we used water, right? but you can see that definitely there's still quite a bit of solid in there. No point in waiting too long, right? We can just keep going. A little bit more. The water seems to be cooling off. We can kind of increase the temperature a little bit, make 
make sure it stays nice and hot. Swirl, swirl, swirl. Put it back on hot plate. Definitely appears that there's less solid in there, and that's something you want to keep an eye on, right? You should be slowly dissolving the solid. If you keep adding solvent and you have the same amount of solid in there that isn't dissolving, that solid may be impurity, it may not be benzoic acid. Keep going. We're not there yet. With your crystallizations, it's important to be patient. getting pretty close. See a few bits of solid left in there, but not a ton. Just going to be patient with it for a minute. See if letting it the water heat up a little bit more will dissolve it. And if not, I'll just have to add a little bit more water. it seems like it takes forever just to get those last little bits of solid to dissolve and that's just because typically you're being a little more careful at this point and not just pouring a bunch of water in. solid so it looks like the dissolving process has completed the best thing to do at this point is just to turn off the heat and allow it to cool on the hot plate this will allow you to cool it more slowly than taking the flask off and putting it directly on the bench top the more slowly you cool the crystals the more pure they should be so if we're patient during this process, we should be rewarded with very pure crystals. Okay, so we've waited a while and some crystals have started to form, which is what we want to see, right? The best thing to do is, of course, to leave it on the hot plate and allow it to cool as slowly as possible. But if you were in a time crunch, 
after the solid had completely dissolved, you could wait just a few minutes for it to cool to the hand, and then you could place it on the bench top and allow it to cool further. It'll cool a little faster, but you'll probably still get pretty decent, um, pure, decently pure crystals. So you can see that we have a good amount of crystals, right? But we want to make sure that we maximize the amount of crystals that we can get. So we want to put it in the ice bath for a few minutes, right? Depending on how much time you have, you could do it anywhere from a couple of minutes all the way up to maybe 15 minutes. Beyond that, you're probably not getting too many more crystals. There's no point in continuing to cool it. So that's the process of recrystallization. From here, you would do a vacuum filtration to collect the crystals, and you can watch that video. Uh, I did a vacuum filtration video separately. One thing I wanted to mention was in the demo, I used water as the solvent. Um, but you're not always so lucky as to be able to use something like water, which is very safe, um, as your crystallization solvent. So if you had to use a different solvent, especially a flammable solvent or something that has a very low boiling point relative to water, the best thing to do is indirect heating. So I would heat up this water bath and then I would have my flask full of the solvent I was going to use and I would just place that in here so that the water more slowly heats the solvent. This will prevent the solvent from getting overheated, potentially bumping, and that would be very dangerous if it was flammable because those vapors could condense, hit the hot plate, and if it's extremely flammable, I've seen fires start that way. 